Hey everybody, this is Kendall Young, Managing Partner at ADU Digs. Um, while we do our still as yet unnamed podcast about all things ADUs, today I'm super excited to be talking about the California ADU Grant Program. That's right, grant, that's like money that goes in your mouth, hands, you don't have to pay it back, which is super exciting. Um, and with me today is Molly Ellis. She is the Director of Training and Outreach for Cal H. FA, which is the California Housing Finance Authority. Basically, they are the dudes that are in charge of finding ways for us to pay for housing in California. So Molly, thank you so much for coming on it this program. It's my pleasure to be here. Hi, Candle. Okay, so we got a lot of questions to ask you because everybody would like to know how can they get money to help them add an ADU and live the life that they want to live in their own property. So let's just start off with super basics. What is the ADU grant program? Sure. Hi. Um, yeah, so it's the California Housing Finance Agency. So I just wanted to get that on the record and we are a state agency. Typically, we live in the space of down payment and closing cost assistance for first time home buyers, um, but we're trying to help out with some of the inventory issues that California faces. So we have recently developed our Cal HFA ADU grant program. It's a $40,000 grant that can be used to credit to um, the escrow, the construction or renovation escrow. Um, any of the pre-development, pre-construction, permit fees, um, there's a laundry list of items that it can go towards, just not the construction, okay? okay. Um, right. But it's a $40,000 grant that is forgiven, um, but it goes directly to the renovation escrow. So in theory, if you had a two, for example, if you had a $200,000 project, you could, or your client could qualify for $160,000 construction or renovation to build the ADU, and then having that $40,000 credit from Cal HFA to fully fund the project. So I'll put in the blog post that I'm doing uh, an explanation of what the grant can cover, but right. let's just bottom line it for you. 40,000, you'll have no problem sucking that up in the stuff right. that's necessary if you're doing your ADU correctly. If you're doing it with bailing, bailing wire and duct tape, I got no help for you. But if you're doing it correctly, 40,000 is right. going to make a dent, a really right. good dent in the right. stuff that you need to pay for that's outside of the sticks and the bricks. Yeah? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Ex Agreed. Excellent. Okay. So that, that sounds really, really exciting. So the next obvious question everyone wants to know who qualifies for this loan? So Cal this HFA, grant, sorry. Who, sorry. Yes, for a grant. Yes. Yes. So grant. Cal HFA, the main qualification, you have to own the home or be purchasing the home as an owner-occupied residence and building just one ADU. Um, so that's the guideline right now. Uh, we do have an income limit. So this is for a low to moderate income California homeowner but it's reasonable. So it, it's it, not it really one is. of those numbers that we took <clears throat> a national number and tried to apply it to the so-so um, high cost of living of, right, that we experience here in California. So it is a very do doable number. It, um, for example, did you say you serve Los Angeles, Los right? Angeles, which is 180,000 and some change. Right. Yeah. That's what I was <laughs> going to talk about. So, so yeah. I did have a so specific very question doable. about that. Very personal, sure. very, very selfish on my part. Is that before or after expenses? Is that your, is that your gross income or is that your taxable income? Well, it depends, right? It depends on whether or not the borrower is self-employed. So it, it follows normal. Sorry. I don't like that word. Sorry. It, follows typical underwriting criteria for the construction loan. Typically, okay. that means gross for a W-2 employee, net for self-employed. Okay, cool. So if you're self-employed and you're making a million dollars, but you spend 800,000, 800, 820,000 on inventory and operation costs, you could qualify for this, for this grant. Right. 
You right. would okay. need, you know, to your the lender. So this isn't the Cal HFA part. This is just what I know when it comes to mortgage lending. You would need two years tax returns to sure. to show the the income if you're self-employed. Sure. It's really important, guys, to understand that Molly is not the person that gives the loan. She's the one who gives the grant portion of your whole EDU financial picture. I get so to do we'll the talk- fun part, right? The grant. <laughs> yeah, because it's like you're the magic me- with the candy. Yeah, the part you don't have to pay back. Yeah. <laughs> Here's me. So let's talk about actually how you you get that grant, right? I mean, you have to work with a lender. Um, yep. And you kept saying renovation or construction lending. A lot of people are going to be unfamiliar with that. So can you kind of shine the light there? Sure. Um, so, and again, speaking not from total expertise on renovation and construction loans. We have, since we aren't a lender, right? We're a government agency. So we've partnered with our lender, tried and true vetted lenders that currently offer a construction or renovation type loan, um, which basically means there there's different parameters, different guidelines. So you'll just have to seek out what works best for you know the folks who are tuning well, in that works best for their for their. Let's not get into lending guidelines because because okay. you're not the lender. Sure. I think what what my my viewers are probably more curious about is like, well, what if they don't get a reno loan or a construction loan? What if they're doing this with a HELOC or funds in the bank um, or something like that? So it has to have a managed construction escrow. So that is, as a state agency, I cannot put $40,000 into the hands of a borrower and say, please go build an ADU, right? (laughs) Just can't do it. Nope, sorry, can't do it. Got it. (laughs) Um, So we've taken um, our grant and partnered it with traditional financing um, to where those funds are managed and um, the lender is on the hook, right? So they're, they basically what I meant by a construction or a renovation loan is that it has that managed construction escrow attached to it. Frankly, I don't care what, not to be flippant, but I don't care what the financing looks like. It just has to have that managed construction escrow piece so that the money is doled out at the specific times as required by the construction escrow um, and that my 40 grand goes in there and then gets paid out to the project and not okay. to the borrower. Them. Okay. So now I got to research and I will do this guys. If one can get a construct managed construction escrow without getting a renovation loan, just in case you're curious about how renovation loans and construction loans work, please take a look at the article that I wrote about all of that. There'll be a link in the comments down below. Okay, cool. So that sounds like a very straightforward process. Um, who said the government makes things complicated? That sounds very simple. I like that. <laughs> we really did. Um, we tried with that very thing in mind. We did try to make it as simple as possible so that we could make a difference. Um, now to, I saw. To your on, I saw. I saw on the website where you apply for this whole thing that you need to, that you need to work with a lender that has a relationship with Cal HFA. So, I mean, we're not going to go down the list because that'll also be linked to in the article. Um, So how does that work? We just need to pick somebody from that list and say, ring, 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 ring. Can you get me some money in that grant too? Right. So keep in mind that right now there is, and this is the vetted tried and true lenders that work with us on our down payment and closing cost assistance programs. Currently there's 18 approved lenders that are offering the Cal HFA's ADU grant program to their clients. Um, So yeah, it would just be a matter of vetting. If you see somebody that's familiar, you can always reach out to um, who who you've used in the past and see if they have a renovation or construction you know department um, to see if it's a possibility that they could do the Cal HFA grant. Um, but yeah, if you are looking for the lender, then there is a list. There's 18 of them. But there's also a special financing caveat to that where we are trying to expand a little on it in order to offer um, the Cal HFA grant in in different ways, cities, counties that might have ADU programs, credit unions that might have ADU programs. So although there's only one on the special financing tab right now, 
please continue to keep an eye on that as I do believe it will grow. Okay. So who applies for the actual grant? What's the process to get it? You get to do it just like you would if you were getting the financing, just like you would getting financing for the ADU. It's, it's a tiny little separate piece that's added to the normal process flow for your loan. Won't hold up your, your deal. It's very straightforward, but you do have to access it through one of those programs that are approved with us or one of the mm -hmm. lenders that are approved with us. Okay, so it's not like I need to go somewhere right now and start applying for the grant. This is something that the lender We'll works do on with your me to, to do. Okay, got yeah. it. All right, cool. So then I guess the answer to the next question is probably I'm going to ask it anyway because I'm on my list. So okay. what if you're somebody like me who is shopping for a property that I can put an ADU on right away, like right now, but I'm shopping. I haven't, I haven't bought it yet. Can you apply for this grant to kind of like, you know, you've only got a hundred million, which sounds like a lot, but it's not that much. Can yeah, I mean, we believe that it's going to last us at least a couple of years. We have a hundred million. Um, so we feel like we're going to be able to do at least 2,500 units. Um, ADUs aren't going away. So I'm sure you all are very happy to hear about that, right, Kendall? But mm -hmm. <laughs> it's only, the momentum is only getting stronger. Um, and although I don't know this for sure, so you can't quote me on this, but I believe that there could be even more funding behind this. Um, as as this is a successful program. So not right now, but in the future, um, I do not believe this is gonna go away anytime soon. But with that said, um, if someone was anxious, um, you, you, would, you would apply for the grant as you apply, as you shop, well, you shop for the property, you get your offer accepted for the property, you open escrow, it would need to be like a home style renovation or something like that, where the ADU, uh, the build of the ADU is incorporated into the purchase with that escrow, con that construction escrow tied to it. Um, it. And so depending on where in the process that is, would be when you would actually reserve the funds. Right, right. And then for most times, it makes more financial sense to use a regular purchase loan to get it because it's going to be months before you actually are ready to build because you got to get permits. So right. probably this will be part of the whole finance. Okay, right, it will. So then they'll just hold back <clears throat> the money for the ADU, okay. right, into the escrow, and then you can move on with the build after the fact. So the real point there is that from your perspective, one shouldn't be feeling like if you don't get your paws on this money this day, that it's not going to be available for me by the time I close escrow and get ready to construct. Correct. I mean, there That's, will come a time where it, where it will become, it could, I'll say it could right. become <clears throat> more urgent. Um, mm -hmm. But in the grand scheme of things, and I know I'm probably going to catch some flack for this, but it is only 40 grand. Well, it, it is substantial. 40 grand is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. It is. And it can, it is. it's going to help a lot of people. But right. at the same time, I've, I have talked to so many people that were so focused on the 40 grand that they're they're costing themselves 60 grand to get the 40 grand. So please keep it there, um, either refinancing when they shouldn't refinance or, um, or moving altogether um, so that's an owner occupied property. Or there's just been several scenarios where, you know, I've kind of talked it out with the, with the consumer and just thought, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do this? I mean, each individual has to do what you think is best financially. Right. For yourselves and for your family. Um, just don't get too caught up in the free money, right? To where it ends up costing you more than the right. free money is getting. Right, right. It's no, I, I totally problem. get it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, you said that it's basically, it's a small part of the whole loan process and it's not going to lengthen things or further complicate stuff, right? So and the, and the lender is the one who's doing the grant application, so one doesn't have to worry about that. Is there anything else about the process other than understanding what your net or your W-2 income is? Is there anything else we need to know about qualifying or getting it? Yeah, if I could talk about the income one more time, because a lot of people, yeah. sometimes when there's a government agency involved, a lot of people think like we're going to look at household income or we're going to look at like a different variation of the income. So I just want to make sure that Everybody realizes that we use exactly what the lender uses to qualify you for the mortgage. 
um, okay. or for the reno loan. So it's not a whole different calculation. We're not trying to spring anything on you. It's not complicated. It really comes down to, um, and there is a guideline involved in that, right? But it really comes down to what the lender is going to use to qualify you for the mortgage. That's what we're going to use for the income limit. Okay, that's, that, that, that's clear enough. And I mean, what documentation is really needed then? It sounds like it'd just be the loan application. It's very more minimal. We're, yep, we're going to get the list of the eligible costs from either the from the lender, but they they usually either compile that or they get information from the builder, the permit fees. They compile all of that information for us to make sure we have forty thousand dollars in eligible costs, and then it's basically just the um, just documenting that they own the property, that they. Um, that they got the construction or renovation loan, the escrow instructions, the wire instructions, and the approval from the lender. So the rest is really just, um, shoot, I'm at a loss for the, like the operational part of it. I lost the word, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask you one of those, gee, I wonder if there's a way around it questions. <laughs> sure. Sorry, I had that. That's I all right. <laughs> what, if, what if somebody is building an ADU and they're actually going to be doing it on personal labor and family labor. And let's just say a family member is an architect and another family member is an engineer, right? These are all things that this right. $40,000, right? So, what, I mean, they're what, obviously they're probably just going to submit bills, but do y'all check on that? I mean, what kind of documentation do you demand? The lender to... absolutely is going to. If they're trying to piece this and like finance it themselves with, uh, with a friends and okay. family discount, probably won't right. work. Okay. Um, okay. Because again, the lender has that component that they are going to, um, you know, they're going to vet out the, the contractors. They're going to like part of this process is making sure that um, the borrower isn't um, taken advantage of from an unscrupulous contractor. And so lenders already, that's already a process that is okay. typically in place with a construction or renovation loan. But okay. yeah, if you're trying, and I have talked to a few people and it is unfortunate, the reality of it is, and I'm just gonna be very frank, um, the reality of it is if you have those kinds of resources, if you have your own money to build the ADU, if you have the friends and family discount for all of your contractors, then um, you, you might not need the financing. So I wouldn't, so this falls to the other thing too, right? It's like, so you wouldn't go out and get a loan to get the $40,000 grant, right? The loan will cost you more <laughs> than the $40,000 grant. So right. just do you, right? The, not you personally can go, but to, to your, to your viewers, you do you, and and unfortunately, the grant's not going to work in those cases. Right, and they right. don't necessarily I, need it. And I hate this because everybody thinks they need it, so I apologize again. But they don't have the same. Um, how can I say it nicely? They don't have the same obstacles that that somebody would have to getting the ADU built that has to finance the project. Right. Right. I love that. I, I love the practic the focus on practicality. Yeah. It's like look at the whole picture, not right. just the grant money. Right. 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 Um, and and one of my favorite fa sayings is, "You do you, boo." Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Yes. I always ask this at the end of every interview: um, Is there anything that I should have asked you that I did not? No, I think you gave me my opportunity when I got to talk a little bit more about the income. Um, so and that's really, see, that's the only yeah. qualification is that you have properly documented They have to own the property and, and the occupy property. the property. And yeah, so about okay, the property. Owner-occupied guys, unit, not going to work but, if you're building your real estate yeah. investment empire. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I could okay. not have spoke more truer words. I, I, I love it. Well, Molly, thank you so much. I know that this information is going to help a lot of people. Yes, um, thank you. And if people have further questions, should they contact me and I'll reach out to you or other resources or do you want to be contacted directly? I am. All of my contact information is on our website, calhfa.ca.gov in the training and outreach tab. Yes, anybody can reach out anytime. I'm happy to help. 
And there will be a link to that as well in the blog post. My name is Kendall Young. I represent ADU Digs. We do beautiful architectural ADUs and we make them accessible. So please take a look at our website. The QR code is right there. And reach out if you have any questions around ADUs at all. I'd love to be the center of your ADU you know, universe, actually, not to put too fine a point on it. Excellent, guys. Thank you so much. We look forward to talking.